Hello everyone! Welcome back to another 2v2 Warhammer battle. This is going to be the Beastmen with uh, Dwarven allies versus the Empire and the Bretonians. So for my battle line here, we have multiple Ungor Spearmen, a couple Gore Herds mixed in with two Best Gore Herds. They're being led by Morgor the Shadowgrave, because why else? Anyone else? Uh, Brace Shaman of the Beast with Flock of, of Seagulls. We'll go with that. Uh, two groups of Harpies. We have two Centigors with great weapons, two Minotaurs with great weapons, and two Gorbuls. And that's going to make up most of my army here. You can take a look at the uh, unit count. We have more than they do. Uh, so I brought a lot of anti-large back here because we're facing off against the two human players, who, or two human opponent, um, powers in the game that all have really good cav. So I was like, well, I probably should bring some anti-cav. So we have a Mount Yoma coming out there I'm going to go after here soon. For my Dwarven ally, we have a row of rifles. Behind them, these are all mostly long beards of various types. One hammerer, two iron drakes, um, an iron breaker at the end, two miners with blasting charges, an organ gun, and two flame cannons. And they are being led by a generic, I'm sorry, by Grom Brindle. I thought it was a generic Dwarf Lord. I was wrong. For the human players, I call them human because that's what their factions are, they're both human. Uh, we have three Grail Knights in this forest, which we will see later. We have two Rex Guard over here in this forest, which we will see later. Um, meaning I didn't see them at the beginning of the battle because they're in the forest. For their main battle line here, we have a line of Halberds. Behind those, we have Great Swords that have all been upgraded a little bit. And then behind those, we have a couple Men at Arms with Pole Arms. And then Spearmen, Peasant Bowmen, two Field Trebuchets. They are being led by Karl Franz on a Pegasus. And then King Lewin the Unker on a, um, well, not on a horse at all. And they also have a damsel. Two more Pegasus Knights back here. And then two Demigriff Knights in the forest is going to round up their um, army. And again, they throw out their mounted yeoman archers. So my idea is to have our Centigors, which are faster. They have a movement speed of, I believe, 96. 96 currently. Against the mounted yeomans, 90. So I wanted to try and surround them. And then I'm going to use the Harpies of Support to try and kill them. And this is going to take a long time. The Mounted Yeomen, they are slower than my Centigors, but they are going to be able to just kind of kite our Centigors for a long time. And for the most part, in the early battle, this is all that's really happening. We are going to be chasing this Mounted Yeoman all the way around here. We finally catch them here after charging for so long. Then they're going to break away, and we're going to catch them again right here, break away, and I think we finally route them here. I'm saying all this right now because I'm not going to follow it too much, but that's what's going on over here. They're going to do some damage to my Sitagors, and I'm going to use our Harpies back here to try and once again corral the Mounted Yeoman around here. Um, I'm going to keep my other Sitagor just kind of in the front line over here. Going to move up our front line a little bit, and I'm also currently waiting for the Dwarven ally. I'm moving up a little bit at a time. Let them move up. I don't want to outpace them, again, because I know that the enemy is going to have Cav that we don't see. I'm, I mean, obviously, I see the Pegasus Knights, but it's only a, a question of what exactly is waiting in these forests, which, you know, we will find out later. So I don't want to really leave my Dwarven ally too far behind, because they have all of these cannons here. So I'm trying to keep my Minotaurs nearby, because they're all anti-large units. And then eventually, I'm going to have our Centigors, um, including the other Centigor that's currently getting into uh, some fun times with the Mounted Yeoman. And they're going to be pulled back over here to try and support the... Um, cannons that are over here the two flame cannons and the organ gun so right here you can see we're actually catching them for the second time they are starting to get winded while the centigors are not because of their ability um let me actually pause i forget what it's called rowdy so this makes them immune to vigor and also gives them additional leadership as long as they are not uh routing or like below 50 percent leadership i think so they have no you know vigor penalties right now even though they've been chasing these guys halfway across the battlefield so they're finally going to eventually catch up to them and then we are going to route them finally right here and the mouse yeoman did do some damage to these centicores and they dealt some damage to these harpies but overall i'm so glad that i devoted my time to take them out you see the organ gun is now opening up fire on the enemy's main position going into these great swords i'm going to be casting or maybe already did cast i think i did yeah i cast is a flock of doom right here so you can see all the damage that that dealt this is just begging for flock of dooms probably going to cast another one here uh, soon ish and again i'm trying to keep my forces close by to these cannons as the dwarf now is going to move up trying to get these rifles in range i am going to be moving up our army soon and i'm going to try to uh, get a line like this um, and when we start approaching this forest is when we're going to finally discover these demigriff knights and you can see that the Pegasus Knights are pulling right around the flank. And I'm like, well, you know, they probably want to come all the way over here and get into these Dwarven Cannons. So, again, that's why I'm leaving my Minotaurs back here. And, and I'm going to be pulling the Centigors back here as well. And there we go. My main battle line is going to be moving up. Again, I'm going to try and get a formation like this. There goes our second Flock of Doom on the enemy's position because they're so clumped up. This is just begging for the Flock of uh, Doom, a.k.a. Flock of Seagulls. And they're also still getting hit by that Orcan Gun that's positioned right back here. Damn, it's going to start be casting some uh, Lightning Spells here. Kind of missed. Kind of missed. Here goes another spell. I think this is a Comet spell. 
I think this is a common spell. Yeah, there we go. And that was also kind of missed a little bit. Uh, that's where we see the Demigriff Knights. So I'm going to assign one of our Spearmen to go and attack them. And then I'm going to give attack orders to try and surround the enemy army and get into these peasant bows behind them who've already been taking a lot of damage from the flock of uh, Seagulls. Back here, the two Pegasus Knights finally get into the Organ Gun. So I'm going to respond with our Centigores. They should be giving a charge order here soon. They kind of stopped short. And then the Minotaur is going to be coming in as well. I'm going to be casting a Flock of Doom over in this area soon to support the fight against the Cav because now we're going to have the Reichsguard coming out. And then the three Grail Knights will be going to going to be coming over here as well you can see the iron drakes in a good position of just roasting these spearmen and my army is st uh, currently starting to get its envelopment you can see we're right here we're trying to get a wide circle here and route off these crossbows i'm going to be sending the two harpies in to hit these crossbows and then hit them with the best scores the gore hers and the ungore spearmen and then uh, morgor the shadow gave i think hits this unit and then we'll penetrate to about right there just trying to tell you what's going on. Uh, Riflemen have gotten a couple good shots, but you can see they are taking some fire from the Peasant Bows, but luckily I'm going to be shutting them down here soon. Field Trebuchets are going to be coming um, down here soon, I think, as well, from these Uncor Spearmen, I believe. Meanwhile, over here, our Minotaurs and Sysagors are now going to be engaged with some Grail Knights, the remnants of the Pegasus Knights who managed to run away from our Minotaurs. And then here comes the two Reichsguard as well, and I think this is when I'm going to cast the Flock of Doom right over here to support this fight. And here we have more Grail Knights coming in. So this is a massive battle, one that I was prepared for. And so here comes the Flock of Doom to try and assist us in this fight. Again, we have our two Gorbals, two Minotaurs, and the two Centaurs. I'm currently cycle charging in and out of this fight against so much Cav. I'm, you know, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to win that fight or not, but we're going to give it our best. Meanwhile, back here, Harpies have dealt their job of routing some of these peasant boats so now i'm just going to have them chase off these routing soldiers to rack up more kills and we are still trying to get our envelopment in and we're going to be doing rear charges back here with our units um more charges right here morgor is now buried in here and fighting against the damsel and king luan leon kerr but he's a very tanky hero so you can kind of tank this um group for a while and now my best scores and spearmen are just kind of getting into these field trebuchets and the remnants of the halberdiers being supported by the riflemen of the, I'm sorry, the thunderers of the dwarven ally. And now here comes their longbeards are going to be hitting the front line uh, of what remains of the Bretonians and Empire infantry. Back here you can see how well the calf fight did for the enemy with the support of the Flock of Doom and just all of this anti-large Minotaurs and Centigors cycle charging. Here comes another Flock of Doom to help these Centigors over here. We are going to be able to route off three Grail Knights and two Reichsguard with our two Gorbals, two Minotaurs, and two Centigors being supported, I think, by the Rifles. Yeah, you can see like Rifles are back here firing into these uh, two Demigriff Knights that are kind of wreaking havoc on their miners currently. They're going to be getting into the Rifles, but I am more concerned with the um, human infantry that's still alive, so I'm just trying to make them break. Meanwhile, our harpies are back here just killing routing units. Back here, we're going to be routing off those other Grail Knights and killing them. And now I'm going to send our Gorbals all the way over here. I pulled back Morgor because he was starting to take a lot of damage from King Lewin. And the Gorbals are going to come over here and pounce on King Lewin as Morgor is going to go down here and help this um, infantry out a little bit. I currently cannot summon any... Um, of the Chaos Spawn because my unit limit was reached. I forgot to keep one space open in my army so it's full so i can't actually summon any chaos spawn right now which is unfortunate the two remaining minotaurs are great weapons they have taken a lot of damage but they're going to come over here against these demigriff knights which is still kind of wreaking havoc on the riflemen so i'm just trying to help out our dwarven ally back over here my centaur is going to be chasing off some more of the humans that are routing into the forest and this one is going to be chasing these two reichsguard that managed to come back from routing and you see more are going to be coming in to try and help against the centaur fight there iron drakes have just been pounding the human position with their flamethrowers most of this game which is really good and the Brave Shaman, I think, has casted one or two more Flocks of Doom right here. And I still have Winds of Magic left over. Because I've been trying not to overcast it. The only reason to overcast, I think, is only just to get the extended range. I don't believe it does any extra damage. Unless I'm mixing, mixing up my spells. But I think that's what it is. Uh, over here, the two Minotaurs of Great Weapons racking up some kills against these Demigriff Knights. And now the Gorbals have made their long run around the Human Infantry line. And they are now engaged in a fight against King Lewin Leon Kerr. Back here, the Harpies are still wreaking havoc and now breaking these units. And they're going to be pulled back to this main line. I think another Harpy is sent off to more routing units over here. Centigor is still just routing more units. My other Centigor group, I think, was finally killed by the remnants of the Reichsguard. But I still have one out there causing some havoc. Riflemen are still in a great position to fire on top of the hill. And that is when the enemy is going to do a chain route. A good game to... Well, we'll get their names here in a moment. I forget their names. Uh, but that was, that was a fun game. I like playing Beastmen when I can just bring a numerically superior army and just close like the jaw of the beastman like that semicircle is the jaw of the beast and we're just closing in and it's so much fun
to do that. On the other hand, though, the Beastmen are still kind of one-dimensional, and that kind of sucks, but it's fun every now and again. You see I got a Chaos Spawn actually there at the very end. But uh, yeah, good game there. Let's take a look at the kill counts. Good game to Idiot with a Gun and Sophia... Syphus Kane? Syphus Kane? Syphus? I feel like that's a Warhammer 40k thing. Um, then we also Legend 27, my Dwarven ally. For the kills here, best scores did really well. The Harpies did their job. Um, I usually stick Harpies either on crossbows, you know, like the ranged units of the army, and then after that's done, I have them, you know, chase off routing units so they don't come back from routing and, you know, reinforce their front lines. So they did a good job at that. The Minotaur is a great weapons along with the Gorbuls and the Brace Shaman helped fight off all of those knights. You can see the Reichsguard didn't get that many kills and we dealt a heavy blows to the real knights as well. So they did really well. Centagoras, I thought, did really well. And, you know, the Angor Spearmen do what they do. They're kind of a fodder unit that you can throw at the enemy. For Idiot with the Gun, 44 kills on Karl Franz, and he still wasn't dead at the end, which is pretty good. The Greatsword line, for the most part, did really well. These Demigriff Knights did really well against the Dwarven Miners and Rifle line. They did really, really well. That's why I had to throw my two Minotaurs into um, the battle with them to try and shut them down, because, damn, they were doing a lot of damage. But I hope you enjoyed that 2v2, everybody, and we will take a look at a cinematic view of this unlikely alliance of Morgor, the Shadow Gave, and Grom Brindle. I really like the organ guns. I just never really bring them because they sit in this weird spot. Because they have a kind of a lower range than just generic cannons and stuff. So, in a lot of matchups, they can actually get sniped out. Probably bring them against, like, hmm, I was going to say green skins, but even green skins like the Doom Diver. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if the two flame cannons actually saw action in this one. Because I think they got sniped by the Pegasus Knights, even though I tried to stop them. The flame cannons are definitely... Uh... Definitely a bad unit. The range is just too short. Get up close shot of that comet. It's a very cool looking spell and very expensive. Holy crap, it's so good. It's like 20 plus just for the base level of the spell, I think. Can't actually fire. Cool. Oh, one of them did. I guess they did see some action after all. Also, in case you haven't seen it yet, the um, trailer for Bretonian Factions releases out and is really cool. CA is been really impressive with their trailers. They have made some pretty cool ones in the past year.
Get him, Morgor. Here comes the Gorbals. <laughs> About to have some bad times for King Luan here. Man, this game still looks so cool. It's just so cool. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching this 2v2, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. Bretonian's release is just around the corner. The 28th, I think it is. It's close. Super close. I'll see you all next time.